Hi, my name is Jerry, and I'm the owner of ASL, supervisor, come expert on septic tanks, treat plants. But what I'm going to do today, what I'm going to try and do today, what I'm going to try and persuade you of, is you can actually have an efficient treatment plant or septic tank uh, lasting a long time. In other words, you can save money as well as looking after the environment. The example I'm going to use today is if you had a small treatment plant, a domestic treatment plant, for four personnel, four people, um, maybe five, um, what you would discharge from your bathrooms, toilets, uh, kitchen, etc., would be one cubic meter. And if you see this white container here, that is one cubic meter. But it's agreed that it's 150 to 200 liters per person per day to make up the 1,000 liters. Over my 40 years experience, I definitely can say that a small septic tank or a small treatment plant with the right size and the right configuration of light area soil or go into a river can easily handle these measurements or this measurement of one cubic meter per day. Now your allowed amount according to the binding rules the environmental agency is up to two cubic meters into land per day. Most families of four or five persons don't reach one half meters, certainly never get anywhere near the two cubic meters per day. I have installed many types and sizes of treatment plants and septic tanks. I've attended many other properties or installations that I have never installed or tanks that have been there for years and years, decades. Um, and I've troubleshooted to find out what the problem is. The one thing I'm going to talk about now is houses that have the right size treatment plant or septic tank, the, the correct ground in terms of light area and soil, numbers used in the tank or the treatment plant are correct. Three top reasons that you have an uncomfortable life with a private system is maintenance, fat, grease and oil or rainwater. On this video we're going to talk about rainwater, roof water. Bearing in mind the small treatment plants I'll show you first are four, five or six personnel using the property and they would produce one cubic meter, one of these white containers, per 24 hours. These systems are manufactured and designed for two cubic meters, up to, two, well, more than two cubic meters per day, but you're, you're only allowed to discharge, according to the bind rules again, uh, up to two meters. But these systems will definitely cope with that two cubic meters per day. Um, and if you had filters fitted um, to your system, they would block up if there was too much flow coming through for the size of the tank. And that would give you an indication or would tell you you've got a slight problem or a big problem. We all have enough common sense to know if we have 30 people going to use our treatment plant, we would need a treatment plant big enough to handle 30 people, uh, five cubic meters per day five of these white containers, which is 5,000 litres per day. And if you had filters fitted and you were discharging more than the 5,000 litres a day, the filters would block up and would tell you you got a problem. You have too much flow for the size of treatment plant. Either you've got a small treatment plant or a large treatment plant, you've got too much flow for either one. You may have rainwater in the system, either directly or indirectly. This is a test that I did, or a, a trial I did, using a two litre um, empty uh, Coke bottle, or whatever it is. Um, uh, this is an actual time. I fill the jug in the top right hand corner of your picture is a test I did, it, again in real time. Um, I disturbed the jug 
to demonstrate settlement because your tank treatment plant or separate tank majority of them separate the solids and the fats and the oils and they just lay in the tank settling all the time and as you can see from this jug it's slowly settling out but if there's rainwater in and it's raining all day there's this food stuff which is unsettled will just carry on straight into the land drains or into the rivers You've, you've, you must have witnessed uh, pouring rain. It could be half inch off the off, off off the paving, and it would all go down here. So therefore, the calculation would be enormous, especially if there wasn't a gully surround. Sometimes you find a, a gully um, purposely designed for surface water, but leads into the foul system, into the sewage system. I estimate that it could be a thousand liters per hour. So five hours, you would have five of these white containers, 5,000 litres per five hours. Which goes through the septic tank or the treatment plant, mixing with the sewage. Well, so what comes out is this brown contaminated sewage. There is three of these inspection chambers, exactly the same. One of them is on a slight incline. Therefore, won't be so receptive as the first two. Once this water butt gets full, which from the large roof space, overfilling, spitting onto this inspection chamber, which is not sealed, straight into the sewer line. Down the step and into the grid there, which then runs into that um, gully there. This other gully, which is the downpipe and the patio, goes into the foul sewer. Demonstrations of surface water, roof water going into the sewage system are from different houses. You can imagine this pea shingle area is quite huge, quite large, and it, it's a catch pitment for surface water and it easily finds its way into the inspection chamber. Obviously these are different tests uh, before treatment plants or this one into a treatment plant and if it was pouring down with rain um, the water from the surface which builds up because of the rain will be pouring all around this treatment plant so it'd be massive the amount of water pouring it mixing with the sewage and going into a river or a stream causing masses of problems this also applies to the public main in other words if you've got a house and it goes to the main public sewer that's why the sewer companies the treatment the public treatment place uh, are dumping stuff into rivers because they can't cope with all this rain we placed the camera in the drain and we found surface water from the ground finding its way into the pipes through open joints a driveway covered in pea shingle lots of surface water hitting this when it rains and it leads right down to that gate where there's an inspection chamber just before the gate as you can see here I was using a half inch hose um, up a hill to the manhole to the inspection chamber and all the water that I poured out my hose found its way quite easily to this inspection chamber and found its way into the sewage system. The next property I went to I'd covered over an inspection chamber with a great big with a, well, a, a, a thin um, sheet of steel and it had holes in it and there was a gap at the bottom of it so water ponding in this drive uh, was finded quite easily and this was a lot of litres going into this um, there was also water at the rear of the property which was finding the inspection chamber at the rear of the property and the, we put some red dye in and you can see the water flying through here it filled this tank up within three hours and there's about four cubic meters in there four thousand liters